Hello YouTube and fellow Star Wars collectors! On this episode of Toys Are The Way, we will be taking a look at the latest wave of vintage collection figures. We have a number of different characters here from Star Wars media such as The Mandalorian, Andor, and Jedi Survivor. At last, we have some new vintage collection figures. It seems like it took a while for this wave to show up, and I'm very happy to finally have it in hand. Originally, I had ordered it from Entertainment Earth, but they also showed up on Hasbro Pulse recently. So I went ahead and ordered a few because I wanted some extras and openers, and I'm very happy to finally have them in hand. So let's take a closer look at each one of these figures and what they have to offer. And first up, we have the Artillery Stormtrooper from The Mandalorian. We have a fantastic image of the character here, loading a grenade into his mortar as he provides support to his fellow Imperial forces on Tython. A really nice image. Love the Canner logo down below. Tython was a very great setting, so all in all, a fantastic card back here. Additionally, we have this awesome Stormtrooper with lots of accessories. He's got his grenades there, his mortar, and really nice paint deco on this figure. On the back, he's VC-263 in the line, and you can see all of the other figures from this wave, and additionally, Vader and Kenobi from the previous wave as well. So all in all, this is a fantastic card. I'm really excited to add this to my Mandalorian carded collection, but additionally add it to my Imperial Stormtrooper carded collection. Once again, Hasbro delivers another impressive Stormtrooper variant by utilizing this definitive trooper mold. Fully loaded with all the necessary articulation, the Mandalorian Artillery Trooper can provide a heavy bombardment of covering fire one round after another. The accessories consist of a backpack with the now standardized peg hole, removable shells, mortar, stand, and E11 blaster. All these included items allow for a tremendous amount of interactivity and world building possibilities. The trooper displays the yellow markings that designate his role and the paint applications have been done well, with the exception of the rocker ankles which should be painted white, but I plan to adjust that myself. Lastly, the shells are able to fit into the mortar itself which also allows other battle accessories to be used with this figure. Moving on, we have Cassian Andor on, naturally, an Andor card. We got a really nice image of Cassian here from the show on Ferrix, looking pretty good. Kenner logo down below. All in all, a very nice warm toned card back. Additionally, we have this fantastic newly tooled figure on a bubble. Really like that orange name pill color. Really helps pop all these like blues that are in his uh, shirt color. And all in all, just looks really good. On the back, he's VC 261 in the line. So it's nice to finally have some Andor figures in hand. It seems like forever ago when I got that B2 droid from Disney Parks, and it would have been nice to get these closer to when the show was on or like, you know, just to finish. But regardless, very happy to have it and looking forward to seeing more characters from the show, such as Luthen, Bix, and many more. This all new from the ground up figure is another excellent display of tooling and continues to exceed my expectations. Fully loaded with the new style barbell hips, ball jointed everything, and rocker ankles, this figure poses effortlessly. Additionally, I noticed that the hands have been sculpted in such a way that they interact with the soft plastic coat, allowing the figure to open his garment and hide any classified or stolen property he may come across. A really neat feature. Furthermore, the soft plastic used has been designed well and does not hinder the figure's ability to take a seat as he reminisces with his droid B2 EMO. Between the exceptional sculpting, portrait, paint applications, and functionality of this figure, I have to say that I am very impressed with our first Andor figure. Moving on, we have our second official vintage collection Andor figure, Vel Sartha. Really nice image of her here during the Aldani mission. I really like this card back. I think the pose looks fantastic, and she's got the Kenner logo down below popping off those dark colored pants. All in all, really good looking card here. And additionally, we have a fantastic figure on a bubble. I think the only thing that could really help this card was maybe some more accessories. Uh, she didn't have a lot during that mission, but maybe it would have been cool to include her poncho from the earlier episodes. I think that would have really helped this figure stand out better on the bubble, personally. On the back, she's VC-262 in the line. So this is definitely a good start to our Andor collection, and I hope that we see more figures, especially from the Aldani mission, so that this figure has something to interact with. But for now, this is a great start. Velsartha is the second addition to our collection from the Andor series, and once again is an all new from the ground up figure. While initially I was not expecting much due to the lack of accessories and face value, I must say that the figure's articulation and posing capabilities quickly changed my thoughts. 
This rebel spy and saboteur sports everything she needs to blast any Imperial bucket heads that stand in her way. Armed with a sci-fi AK-47 blaster, new style barbell hips, ball jointed knees, elbows, and rocker ankles, Velsartha can achieve a number of action poses. The figure oddly does not have any hinges at the wrist, but can still hold the rifle very well, achieve a plethora of battle stances, and display wonderfully in my collection. Next up we have a figure and card that I was very excited for and it is Luke Skywalker Imperial Light Cruiser from The Mandalorian. We have a fantastic image of Luke Skywalker here from that epic scene where he shows up to save Grogu and the rest of the team aboard the light cruiser. The lightsaber looks fantastic ignited and I just love how the green light is glowing off of that mist and we have the Kenner logo down below. Additionally, we have this wonderful vintage collection figure with soft goods, lightsaber, and other accessories looking really good on that orange name pill color. On the back, he's VC 264 in the line. We'll say one thing about this figure is that the cape does move a little bit if you kind of shake the, the card around. Um, it was a moment ago just like very high up and bunched up, like way above his head. Um, I aggressively shook it and it kind of went back down you can kind of see it's a little bunched up and funny here so if you're very particular about how your figures displayed on cards that might be a little troublesome for you so just something to be cautious about but other than that it's a fantastic card and figure Jedi or not, if you're planning on taking on a whole platoon of dark troopers, you're going to need all the articulation you can gather. Luke Skywalker from the Imperial Light Cruiser is an excellent upgrade to our collections. Partially tooled using the midsection from the Return of the Jedi release, the arms, belt, and lower tunic have now been updated. Additionally, the figure sports new legs with rocker ankles, but unfortunately has the old style ball jointed hips. The black cloak has been wonderfully sewn and engineered so that it drapes well over the figure in combat, and the hood is appropriately sized and can be taken down for display. Similar to the previous Vintage Collection releases, this figure also comes with an unlit lightsaber that can be attached to the belt, and the blaster pistol that was used to threaten Jabba the Hutt just before the Rancor battle. While I do appreciate extra weapons, I would have liked to see some extra hands included instead. Here you can see the Force hands from the Cave of Evil set, attached with some tack, and I think this displays wonderfully when paired with our Dark Troopers. Moving forward, I think extra hands like the ones included with Dark Times Vader should be included for all Jedi and Sith. Moving on, we have Cal Kestis on a Jedi Survivor card. It is very exciting to finally have this character in the Vintage Collection, and this is a really good first looking card. We have a nice image of the character off on a distant world, somewhere in the galaxy, on a mission, looking pretty cool. Lightsaber ignited, looks nice. I would have preferred that, maybe not to just be tucked in the top corner. It would have been cool if like, you know, part of it was like exposed back down here. But all in all, still a really nice looking card. And we have a fantastic newly tooled vintage collection figure on a bubble with lots of accessories. So great stuff. And on the back, he's VC 265 in the line. So it's very exciting to finally have this character added to my collection, but hopefully we can also see his previous look added to the Vintage Collection as well. But for now, this is a great start. Cal Kestis has been on the top of many collectors' most wanted Vintage Collection figure lists, and with the amazing display of recent sculpting and 3.75 action figure tooling, there's no better time than now. This Jedi Survivor is another all new from the ground up Vintage Collection offering that sports all the new modern articulation one would need to evade the Empire and its Inquisitors. Cal Kestis comes fully loaded with ball jointed everything, new style hips, rocker ankles, and a number of accessories. Such items included are his blaster pistol, which fits well into the soft plastic holster, a lightsaber, unlit hilt, and most notably his droid companion, BD-1, who also sports articulation on the legs and head. While the droid cannot attach to the figure as seen in the game, I have simply used some tack to do so. Finishing off our wave, we have the Clatoonian Raider from The Mandalorian. We have a nice image of the ATST here that this figure interacts with when these lowlifes take advantage of the poor Krill farm during the first season of The Mandalorian. It's really nice to continue to see Hasbro put vehicles that certain characters interact with on cards, and this image of the ATST looks great. It's a nice action scene, you got lots of smoke around, Kenner logo down below, you got some Marauders there. All in all, a really nice looking card. Additionally, we have this fantastic figure on a really bright name pill color. I like that lime color. I think it's going to add some nice color to our Mandalorian card of the collections. 
and on the back he's VC 266 in the line. So while this is not my favorite figure of the wave, I really do like this card back and I think it's going to add a lot to my Mandalorian carded collection and I just love seeing the ATST on cards. As each new wave of vintage collection figures continues to set the bar higher and higher, I find it challenging to accept releases that use outdated tooling from older 1.0 figures. When it comes to the articulation, the Clatoonian Raider does not do well when compared to Calcastus, Velsartha, or the rest of the wave. Cursed with the outdated swivel hips, this figure can only achieve a fraction of what the other figures offer, which is a shame considering how much I appreciate alien characters like these. Moving forward, I would like Hasbro to consider abandoning swivel hips and update the pelvis of these figures with ball joints in the future. When compared to the previous release on the right, the paint applications are darker in some areas and look excellent, but the figure could have used some more weathering on the scarf. I have definitely ordered a few of these since they are still a pretty decent figure, and perhaps I will try my best to customize them with better leg articulation, enabling them to be displayed better in my dioramas. Taking a look at these figures out of the package and displayed together, I must say this is another fantastic vintage collection wave. We finally have a mainline release of a popular video game character, some new media offerings, and a continued emphasis on The Mandalorian. Despite the Clatoonian Raiders setbacks, we have lots of fantastic tooling displayed here and I look forward to setting up a bunch of scenes and dioramas. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and taking a closer look at this latest vintage collection offering. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below, drop a like on this video, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It always helps and is greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and may the force be with you.